Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how you can log into your Raspberry Pi's GUI uh, through a headless connection. So this is your Raspberry Pi's connected to your network via either Wi-Fi or Ethernet and you can access the GUI on your home computer screen here uh, without the need of an external monitor, mouse, and keyboard. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is open up your internet browser and go to realvnc.com slash raspberry pi. You don't actually have to do this, but let, let's do this. And what you're going to want to do is download the VNC viewer and install it. So I've already done that. We see the real the VNC viewer here. Next, you're going to want to open up an instance of your terminal. And I will just full screen this and make it bigger so we can see what's going on. And you're going to want to log into your Raspberry Pi via SSH. If you have not configured your Pi for this yet, check out my previous tutorial. So I'm going to log in SSH Pi at Raspberry Pi dot local. And it's going to prompt me for my password, which is Raspberry. And now I have logged in. The next thing we're going to want to do is uh, configure our Raspberry Pi to receive a VNC connection. So type in sudo raspi-config and navigate down to advanced options and then navigate down to advanced 5 which is VNC. Hit enter and would we like to have our VNC server enabled? Yes we would. So it's enabled, great. We finish and now we're going to reboot our Pi with the command sudo reboot. You can see that this closes the connection to the Pi, which makes sense because we've rebooted the Pi, and it's going to take a moment for our Raspberry Pi to restart. After your Raspberry Pi has rebooted, we should be able to log into it with our VNC viewer here. So click on your VNC viewer, and yes, we want to open it. And so, you know, I tested this out first, uh, so this exists. This won't exist for you. We need to know the IP address of our Raspberry Pi. So how do we find this out? Let me just uh, change my terminal. In your terminal, type in ping raspberry pi dot local. To exit this, click control C. And we see here that we've been pinging 100113. So you could type in here 100113. And it will say like, you know, do you want to continue? Yes, we want to continue. We need to type in our username, which is pi, and then our password, which is raspberry. Click OK. And this logs you into your Raspberry Pi. Here you have it. This is your wonderful VNC uh, server. Now there's a couple things here that can be improved upon. First off, this is a very small window and I have a big display here. And if I put it in the corner here and I blow this up, holy moly does the resolution take a dive. And that's because the resolution of this is like less than that of your smartphone likely. And so we're going to want to change this so it doesn't look so terrible whenever we want to access our Pi. Another thing is, is what happens if you're at, you know, another computer and you don't have this software installed, the real VNC viewer? Well, if we open up our internet browser, we can actually type in the IP address of our Pi, add a colon and type in 5800 and what this is is this is the port through which a VNC connection happens and if you hit enter it will launch a little Java applet here if we give it a moment and after the Java applet is launched we get this pop-up here for our VNC uh, viewer and it defaults to our server here just hit connect and continue and your username is pi your password is raspberry and there we have it. So through your web browser with Java installed, you can. this is an alternative way to access it um, if you're on another computer. But again, the resolution here is terrible. So let's, let's sort this out. So I'm going to close this down. I'm going to close down our browser here, and I'm going to close down the real VNC here. And I'm going to blow up my terminal again and increase the font size so it's easier to see. And what we're going to do is we're going to SSH into our Pi. So SSH Pi at raspberrypi.local and our password is raspberry. We're going to have to edit our configuration file here so that we can um, uh, specify what resolution we want. So type in sudo which means super user do. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with uh, Linux it means that we can do things that could potentially cause a lot of damage type in nano. Nano is a text editor that comes default on the Raspberry Pi. 
type in slash boot slash config dot text and this allows us to edit the configuration file and there's a lot of text here and we're going to want to scroll down to where it says HDMI group equals one and HDMI mode equals one just add some spaces here and underneath of that type in the, our first command which will be HDMI underscore ignore underscore EDID which stands for extended display identification data and we're going to want to set this to be equal to 0x a five zero 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 eight zero. So what this does is this makes it so that when it boots, it ignores uh, extended display and identification data um, in the event that your computer monitor can't handle it. So it just makes it more accessible for more users. And then you're going to want to say HDMI underscore group is equal to two. So what this does is it sets the output group to be DMT or display monitor timings. So, I mean, the timing of a computer screen uh, is different from that of a TV, and I am assuming that you're going to be logging into your Pi via a computer uh, with a computer screen attached to it. Next, type in HDMI underscore mode equals 85. So, the fact that I'm typing in 85 suggests that there are 84 other possibilities, potentially more, and there are. And uh, so what 85 is, is 1280 by 720 at 60 hertz, uh, so a 720p definition screen. If you want lower resolution, like 1024 by 768 at 60 hertz, choose mode 16. If you uh, go with like mode 77, then you're at 2560 by 1600 at 60 hertz. The higher the resolution you go, uh, expect slower refresh rate because you are using your network to communicate all that resolution. Just keep that in mind. To exit out of this text file editor nano here, hit control and then X. And this says, uh, do you want to save it? And yes, we do. So hit Y. And then it asks what name. We're going to keep the name. So just hit enter and boom, we're done. Next, you're going to want to reboot your Pi with sudo reboot. So again, this will take a moment. And I'll just open up my web browser here again, and I will type in the IP address of my Raspberry Pi, followed by the port uh, that the VNC server is being hosted on. All right, it looks like it's booted up. Hit enter. Our VNC viewer is booting up again. Yes, we want to log in. Username is Pi. Password is Raspberry. Hit OK. And there you have it. So now the resolution looks a lot better. And as I said, this is mode 85, and there, oh, it doesn't work on uh, Java, <laughs> the resizing the screen. But it looks a lot better now, so if we were to open up a browser, we can check out um, uh, the Raspberry Pi here. And if we open up our VNC viewer, I guess we want to open it up, we can log into our Raspberry Pi again. And here we see. Um, through the program, the VNC viewer program. And if we drag, we can uh, resize it. Although, of course, our resolution stays the same. So there you have it. How to remotely access the GUI of your Raspberry Pi. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. For more tutorials like this, visit thezanshow.com.